I'll start with uh, introducing myself and my colleague at the back. My name is Stan. Uh, at the back of Stan is uh, Nick. Uh, we're both technical evangelists here at Microsoft in Velux. Uh, that means we have, we, well, evangelism in our job title. Um, heard the, 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 the previous meetup was at a church. Now it's evangelists. And an evangelist standing in front of you, I can kind of feel a, a theme going on here. But the, don't worry, evangelism, and I, eventually I got to explain this to my mom who teaches religion at school. Evangelism is nothing about religion. It's about uh, evangelizing cool stuff, especially cool stuff coming from Microsoft. Um, and apparently within Microsoft there are people who have an even more difficult title to uh, explain to their, uh, to their mother. Like, for instance, uh, a guy called Anders Helsberg. He's a technical fellow. <laughs> Try to explain that to your mom. What do you do at work? I'm a fellow. Anyway, you don't just become a technical fellow, you have to do some pretty great stuff in order to get that title. Um, some of the cool stuff he did was, for instance, uh, be the lead architect on C Sharp. Who has never heard about C Sharp? So this guy basically invented it. it C Sharp was not the only thing he, uh, he, he's known for. He's also the creator of uh, Delphi. Anybody heard, never heard about Delphi? Somebody who has never heard about Turbo Pascal? That's also the guy who in had that invented it. He joined the company in uh, about, two, uh, about 20 years ago, and in 2012, he uh, came up with something new, or introduced something new, called TypeScript. Now, as he calls it himself, or the, the, the strict definition of what TypeScript is, is it's a type superset of JavaScript that, exp that compiles to plain JavaScript. That's two times JavaScript in one definition. That means it's a lot about JavaScript. And the end result of what you'll get with TypeScript is just plain JavaScript, and that's the beauty about it. Everything you'll see today, every demo you'll see, you'll see today, we're not going to show you anything else than what you would get with JavaScript, but the road of getting there, the tools we can offer you, we can offer you through this superset are just taking it to the next level. At least that's what TypeScript uh, promises you. Now, why TypeScript? Well, TypeScript, we know that JavaScript in general uh, can be pretty hard when, we, when you're working on um, big scale, large scale uh, projects. Um, if you're typing JavaScript all day, you'll probably have a lot of code in, in one file and then a lot of files with a lot of code. So making sure that you don't lose your uh, direction between where your code is sitting and what you're doing with it, that's where TypeScript can, can help by adding functionality, not by replacing something in JavaScript or uh, reinventing some principle that, was, uh, that, that is typically um, within the, the, the ECMAScript um, standard. TypeScript is only about adding functionality, not about replacing or doing something better at all. Um, the main thing TypeScript does is uh, introducing static types to uh, a scripting language like 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 JavaScript. Uh, so basically, if you if you're a pure JavaScript developer right now, opposed to what C# Sharp developers or C# and Java developers will tell you, uh, you really need to do to to to, to what the things you really need to do development, like uh, uh, statement completion, go to definition, um, find all references, all these functionalities that these guys have, we don't have them in JavaScript, but TypeScript will introduce them to us as well. So essentially, whenever you have that conversation again about JavaScript is scripting, it's not programming, this, will, this changes everything. You get all the features that, they, that these guys have with all the benefits of, of, of doing web development. Now, try to think what kind of features might that um, help you with on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Try to think how you're replacing um, variables the, the, how are you renaming variables in your code right now? That would probably be um, find, replace, grep, and then something. If you have a typed superset, then TypeScript in this case can do that for you without having to do all the work manually. It's all based on, it's, it's all included within that uh, superset. Now if we say, if we when we introduced TypeScript, there was um, a promise. To, to leverage JavaScript as a multi-platform um, um, development language. 
Uh, and it actually makes sense because it are, there are already, already a lot of um, large applications written in a type of cross-platform technology or something that was promised to be cross-platform from the start. Think about Java, think about Flash, think about Silverlight. Um, promised to be cross-platform development uh, by using a plugin. Um, by now, I think most of them kind of failed that promise. Um, but there's still one language that is keeping up to the, uh, the, the cross-platform dream, which is JavaScript. Because essentially, you don't need a plugin for it. You do need some kind of software or plugin for it called a browser. Uh, but even though, if that, even though that browser is co can come from any vendor in the world, they all implement the same JavaScript um, inter interpreter. So cross-platform development, thanks to a browser on any type of PC, JavaScript is actually right now the only way to, to actually make it happen. If you're comparing, if you'd like to compare TypeScript to any other supersets or any other technology, what, what would be the first thing that com comes to mind? Flow. Flow. Coffee, Coffee script. At Google, they're working on stuff like uh, Clojure, uh, AdScript was there as well, Dart. All things that kind of have their interpretation of, of what it could do. But, I, but I'm convinced that uh, TypeScript can be a helpful addition to, to, uh, to, to doing uh, web development in general. Something that's important for regarding everything we're discussing when we're uh, mentioning TypeScript or JavaScript as a project coming out of Microsoft is that it's open source. So everything that's happen that happens in the development of JavaScript, it's uh, available on GitHub. We uh, started by, by publishing it on, on CodePlex, moved it over to GitHub because that's where real open source uh, uh, happens. Uh, so if you want to see what's happening behind the scenes, if you want to see the updates, the pull requests that the team is doing live, just check out the GitHub page. Uh, that's what it's for. In general, again, what, it, what TypeScript promises to do is just plain old JavaScript, add it with your own cup of tea, your own type of uh, superset. Then with the, 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 the tooling you need in order to take advantage of, those all, of, those, of that added functionality. But in the end, the only thing you'll get left with is just plain old JavaScript, because that's the thing that works in browsers. I've never seen a browser that is uh, uh, optimized for TypeScript or optimized for that, that other superset. Eventually, just plain old, perfectly written JavaScript, that's what you want in your uh, website, in your project. Um, so at this point, it's, it's just that I'd suggest to uh, get going and show you in code what it actually uh, looks like. <coughs> I'm going to get a little sip of water because my clicking noise was even annoying me. And at this point, um, let me show you. Probably the, the, the most typical uh, demo you could see, which is uh, a typical hello world or hello someone um, application. Where we start with uh, would be just a typical HTML file that you, as you know it, uh, doing nothing special. It uh, has a, 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 a it has doc type, it has a, well, in this case, a jQuery script already loaded. I uh, bumped the font a little to make sure it's, it can be seen from the back. Uh, and then it includes a script um, a simple JavaScript, a .js file, where the magic happens. Uh, so what is the magic? Well, nothing that magical. Um, a typical JavaScript function, which um, eventually updates the body of my HTML file. Nothing magical about this. What TypeScript can do and make this even more magical is add some, tool, is add some functionality to your tooling. Uh, in order to do that, the first thing to, uh, the first thing we probably need is to to add or, uh, or to m npm in uh, typescript as uh, a module so i'll add it globally anyway and at this point this is where we get started um, so what the, uh, the 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 function is doing in general is it, i guess it's quite obvious but we want what we want to do is is add those nice things that uh, Java developers, that C-sharp developers, that real programming language uh, developers have, we want to add them to our favorite IDE, IDE, 
And that IDE can be basically anything. It can be um, Visual Studio Code, like in my example, or Visual Studio 2015, if that's your thing. Uh, if, you're, if you prefer using Sublime, um, Atom, you know, you, you name it. Sublime has a perfect, has, has a great plugin uh, um, to, to, to do TypeScript development. Uh, basically, any type of um, IDE you like, uh, TypeScript pro probably is going to be available uh, right out of the box. Um, so right now we have we started out with the, with the, with the JavaScript file, uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is just rename it to a TypeScript file. I can increase definitely can increase the font size like this. <laughs> Big enough. So I changed the, the the TypeScript file to a JavaScript file, and I kind of broke my simple application. Um, in order to get that going again, I'll just compile uh, with the, the compiler I just uh, I just got uh, based on uh, that new TypeScript I have. So um, while executing this, oh, I'm gonna quickly show you the folder where my folders are, where my files are in as well. While executing this, the only thing that we'll do is uh, whoops. Oh wow, I'm getting started. This is already the only thing that thing is th this uh, compiler will be doing right now is make sure that I have uh, a J I get a JavaScript file based on what was in my TypeScript file. Now, I promised you that uh, the only thing we'd be looking at today would be pure JavaScript uh, in, the, in, the, in the long run. So um, I'm quickly going to go back to a small font so you can see it. TypeScript file on the left, JavaScript file on the right. Spot the differences? None. You, spot, you spotted one? New line. A new line at the end. <laughs> Apparently, that's a good thing. Uh, um, I don't know. Is that a best practice? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I should do best practice in my demos as well. <laughs> um, just by compiling it, the only thing I got was play, a plain JavaScript file that was generated for me. Obviously, you want to automate that somewhere down the road. Um, but the outcome is. Exactly that JavaScript file that will make my, my website work again. So at that point, I'm, um, I'm ready to go uh, and make my uh, TypeScript file a little more interactive. So the first thing I probably want to do is uh, enable some stuff like, or, or add some stuff like um, types to my application. Uh, right now, if I add a user to my greeter function, uh, that can be anything. It's a String in this case, uh, um, saying Han Solo. But if I'd say, if I'd add a um, number instead of a name or a string, nobody really complains about it. Once I add, say, if I have a person going in this function, it has to be a string value, and I add that specific type, then I will get in my editor those. Um, um, red wiggly lines, squiggly lines, uh, in order to tell me that there's something wrong in my code. It's very simple code. So, so uh, if I just hover over it, it will tell me that, well, if you want to use a greeter function, uh, you can't provide it with a number, please do a string instead. Um, actually, if you're doing development in general, and you don't want to hover over every, anything uh, in code, for instance, you have this uh, small uh, indicator at the bottom right, bottom left. Um, which will give you an overview of all the, the errors you might want to, uh, to, to check for. So in this case, I know that 33 won't work, so I'll go back and go for, uh, oops. And right out of the box, now I have a, uh, uh, a function that is aware of the type it, it consumes. Who's already amazed by this? No? <laughs> Stepping up another notch? Uh, Never run it. You, you probably never run in this kind of uh, error. You never spend hours searching for. No. Um, so at this point, you have you you just got that error. Um, let's add something that JavaScript definitely doesn't know, uh, or doesn't know yet, like uh, an interface inter for a person in general. Um, Say a person has a first name 
which has to be a string and a last name. Then all of a sudden I can uh, declare instead of just a string as a username, <coughs> uh, I, I can make I can make sure that that's a uh, person by saying his first name. And see, I got some uh, IntelliText saying what I can use here. Uh, first name would be um, Han in my in this case. Who hasn't seen? Who's a fan? Of, who's who's not a fan of Star Wars? Who hasn't seen the latest movie? Okay, I'm gonna have to watch out for spoilers. Um, I'll try at least. Uh, so at this point, instead of a person um, that is a string, I'd like to provide a person as a, as an interface, and just like that, um, I just added something that JavaScript typically didn't know. Uh, that JavaScript didn't, typically didn't warn, wouldn't warn you for uh, if something would go wrong, but that I now have uh, as part of the same um, uh, in, in the same application. Uh, the only thing I want to do now is make sure that the file gets compiled again, or if I want to automate this, I'll make sure to uh, by adding um, the, w, the watch par parameter that it watches every update I'm doing to my file. And uh, because code in this case is such a nice editor, it will try to, it will make sure that it updates my code as it's, uh, as it's uh, moving along. So if I change names, and I don't do anything except saving, then um, the compiler will try to pick it up. And my editor in this case just updated uh, my JavaScript file as well. So in terms of um, working on a project, or, or developing something in general. Um, I just made a boo-boo. <laughs> Anybody sees this faster than me? After, yeah, that should be um, Han's first name. And hopefully, last name. I'm getting feedback, useful feedback. That's good. So it's updating, it updated, and there you go. A demo that actually works. Um, is that nice already? Or is it something you didn't have before that you would like to use in your next project? Still looking for something better? OK, tough crap. That's OK. Um, <coughs> Say instead of uh, an interface, I want to. Yeah, this question. Uh, no, I didn't catch it completely. Compiler won't compile it directly, um, or, or by default, I think it will it will just pa pass it through. But you can um, tell the compiler to uh, halt on errors, for instance, if you want to block that part of your development process. That's something you can. Uh, that's a parameter you can you can uh, you can configure within the, the compiler itself. So that's where you get the uh, the, the you get to, to tell the compiler what to do. Now instead of just saying I've got an interface for um, every person I add. Let's add something like a class um, for basically characters in general. So I get what I get to add is a constructor with um, say its um, first name, which has to be a string which I would like to be a string. Um, I would like also like to have, say, uh, a maiden name, Oops. in case my character would be Han's wife, for instance. That's not a spoiler. You already knew that from episode six. 
and my typing is really killing me today. Well, let's go for a last name as well. Now, as I have this um, constructor now, I just want to make sure a full name, if I would need it, consists of the first name. Just full name consists of a first name plus a maiden name, if it exists. I can pretty it up, prettify that up later. And eventually a last name, so I get the maiden name. Oops, again the plus. And I can get going like this. Meanwhile, the, the my um, compiler is doing all the magic on, on the other end, and I just get to uh, use the exact same thing, but then instead of having, uh, instead of using, um, uh, instead of providing a, a person like that, what I want to do is say a user by right now is a new character, and then by identifying a new character, IntelliSense in, in code will be able to tell me, thanks to TypeScript, uh, that the first name I need to enter would be a first name. The first thing I would have to enter is a first name. Let's say that we, uh, yeah, we had a first name. Our second name would be, uh, anybody knows by heart? <laughs> and her last name then would be, she's married to first guy. Um, as of this point, these are probably things you're looking for as a JavaScript developer as well. Who thinks you don't need this? Everybody likes this kind of functionality. So after three tries, I got you all into JavaScript development. Awesome. You're an easy crowd. I didn't say that. Um, Basically, at this point, adding uh, functionality like this to a known, um, known language like JavaScript, especially if you look at what, it gen what, what the, 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 the superset is generating for you, I can imagine you already understand that this can dramatically improve your, uh, your JavaScript development in general, especially if you're working on a large um, set of uh, uh, code, or if you're working with a whole team that where you actually need that kind of, kind of functionality to, to, to uh, structure uh, the code within your project. Uh, this can probably uh, get you going quite fast. Um, I'm going to jump back to my slides. probably see a lot of, th of things blinking behind me, or nothing behind me. I'm back. Um, so eventually, making, adding TypeScript to a project is, is quite simple. You just start by renaming your JavaScript file, by adding the compiler and making sure that the compiler once in a while uh, translates that TS file to a JS file. That's the only thing you do in order to add TypeScript functionality to your entire project. The things you get out of it are typically um, structural typing, so a tool, an IDE that helps you um, understand what you're doing while you're typing it. Um, and you get all the nice, you get to, to use all the nice things like classes, interfaces. Uh, classes, for instance, it's available in ECMAScript 6, but it was already available uh, before if you were uh, if you were relying on TypeScript. Uh, this, the essence of using TypeScript basic, basically means that you'll have better tools or you'll, you'll have more powerful tools at your disposal when you're doing uh, web development. And one of the nice additions to it would be that uh, it works with all existing JavaScript libraries as well. Actually, there's something uh, quite cool to be said about it works with your existing JavaScript libraries because one of the projects that we saw being born out of TypeScript uh, in general, um, spontaneously outside of Microsoft, was a website called uh, Definitely Types. Quickly gonna show you. 
Oh, I want to show you. So this is a, is a, a community website that was that just born was born out of a community. Well, basically, the uh, the the authors or the community itself uh, discovered that hey, Microsoft is building this uh, this this superset, and it kind of helps you understand code in general. Why don't we start documenting all the code, all the plugins that are available on the internet, in order to make sure that um, JavaScript development and all the plugins are well documented within any IDE we use. So that's what the guys from uh, definitely at uh, definitely type uh, try to, to to get going, and right now they're uh, managing a GitHub repo, which is quite popular. Uh, if you s if you have a look at the uh, uh, number of contributors and, and commits, that's that's pretty decent for a uh, for a, a not that uh, the community that's not that old. But basically, what they're doing is documenting the entire internet for all the types of uh, uh, libraries that is out there. So for instance, a popular library could be most popular JavaScript library whatsoever. I hear a lot of things. I would say jQuery. I think I heard that as well. Um, React. React is in there as well. React is supported by TypeScript as well. So basically try to come up with a type of uh, JavaScript library there's so many that if I would go and search for for instance jQuery uh, well any um, library that comes with jQuery will uh, be in front of my list so I did some searching for jQuery mobile that's where jQuery itself comes in if you look at the work that they're doing basically they're building uh, definition files or declaration files where they document everything that's available within jQuery um, so say any any function that is in there, uh, the type that that function requires or that or it gives you, uh, plus the full documentation of what it does to help you as a as a new developer or as a seasoned developer uh, know what it what what the what the function implements and, and what it what it uh, needs. That's all available in there. Uh, so essentially, if right now I want to use this document uh, this um, declaration file within my project. Um, an easy way to get going could be just copy this file and uh, start doing another demo. Okay. So here's my file again. That's good. Uh, my second demo would be in, in this uh, joke file. Uh, I click on my comments and stuff. Uh, I'll still get going on the on that same um, HTML file, but instead of reader, I'm going to include the joke.js file. And what that uh, script will do for me is again really simple. Get get a get a um, a JSON file from some uh, website like the Internet Chuck Norris database, I think, uh, and get a random joke based on, in my case, Han Solo instead of Chuck Norris, because everybody knows already knows all the Chuck Norris jokes by now. Maybe if you don't, you'll learn some new ones today. Um, so I'm going to refresh my file, just a plain JavaScript file, um, nothing magical about it. So if I want to convert this into a TypeScript file, first thing to do would be renaming the file itself. Then I'll uh, stop this one because I was watching my first demo. Uh, compile it again, or compile it as well. Uh, put a watch. Have it watched. So there I go. Identical, um, identical thing. Um, and by now. What I want to do is, is add that. Uh, what I what I might I want to do is add that that the additional file I uh, or the jQuery file I just got from the um, um, from that website. So is that whoops. Da -da -da. <laughs> Are you having as much fun as I am? I doubt it. There you go. 
So if I want this functionality in my um, time, a TypeScript file, it should solve some things for me, like all the stuff I'm missing. Um, by default, TypeScript will help me with anything that's TypeScript. Um, but if I want, if I wanted to help me with, for instance, this, um, a dollar sign, which could be anything, um, an easy way to to get going could be to add a reference to my file, to my uh, declaration file. Hey, if I type slower, I type less mistakes. I will increase the font size. That big enough? And like that, um, it's still not working because I forgot to do one thing. In order to make sure that um, TypeScript knows the whole definition for uh, jQuery, um, or another way to, to actually reference this, this, uh, this file, would be to use a function called TSD, which is uh, a TypeScript, uh, which will add definitions for TypeScript, uh, and basically gets all the, the, the files I'll need from um, definitely types as a resource. So as I say, at this point, add TSD jQuery into my project. Type slower, help works better. Um, TypeScript will just implement everything that I have, or everything I know, uh, within this, um, uh, within my project. Now this should be working. Oops, it did, did it. Reference. Whoops. Born in the HTML4 era, I'm sorry. And there I go. So right now, uh, no more squiggly lines on the dollar sign. I think that's a good sign in general. Squiggly lines, always bad. Never works. Um, and just by adding that comment, I now have support for everything, or, or potentially everything that could be in, uh, in, in, in jQuery. Like the get JSON um, function, now it just doesn't just tell me I can handle a string and then some other information. Get JSON actually loads JSON code is actually the full dec the full uh, documentation that's being managed by the definitely typed team. Functionality you probably didn't have before in your favorite IDE. Talking about favorite IDEs, what would be your favorite IDE in general? Anybody on Notepad? <laughs> on the Macintosh alternative for not Notepad, Atom users, Sublime users, Visual Studio users. Cool. Visual Studio Code users, Visual, Stu Visual Studio Code users on a Mac, on a PC, on a Linux machine. Oh, we've got everybody in one room today. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Never seen this. Um, outside, yeah, in, yeah, definitely. Um, sure. Um, why did you you need to both download uh, manually the definition and install it uh, via the CLI? I didn't have to. I didn't. Well, the CLI tool actually will help me with with the next thing. Uh, uh, if I, for instance, well, if I want to add the reference to, to JavaScript in every file, mm -hmm. that would be an option. But an alternative that my tooling will allow me to do is add a, a, a separate file called a, J, a, a um, TypeScript config file, which is a JSON file eventually. <laughs> it will help me to, to pick up the right declaration or all the declaration, declarations straight from the source uh, map that, that, uh, that they're in, if I add them by, by using the CLI tool. So at this point, if I say within that config file, um, add some compiler options uh, like source map and set it to true. You love IntelliSense and squiggly lines, thank you. By just adding this and then um, um, using my CLI tool to, to add the reference, you'll see that in my original file, you'll still get uh, what that, uh, it will suddenly realize or, or understand what that uh, dollar sign means. Now you don't need that uh, downloaded file anymore. Oops. Right, I could just delete this. Actually, the, the downloaded file was in order to make it, uh, to link it directly. 
So there it is, gone, and it still works. Does my application still work? Because eventually it's now parsing this JavaScript file for me? Yes, because it, uh, nothing really changed. <laughs> there it is. It's a bit slower, but it still works. Where has the definitely type file gone, or are you using one directly from the net? I definitely fight. The, 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 the document file, I think it was downloaded now to my PC because I did the... Uh, as a as a DTS file, yeah. Um, <coughs> don't try to smile when you're reading things during a demo. Oops. Or don't try to smile when you're doing your own demo. Um, so this would be a typical JSON, f um, a typical JavaScript way of, of or, or typical jQuery way to to include um, a joke in that file. Um, if I'm now adding the exact same thing in, in, uh, as a function. Uh, say I need a function get joke. I can essentially do almost the exact same thing. Uh, but say, uh, <coughs> let's put this in a variable. Type slower than it works better. I think that should be at the back. Is it already there? <laughs> like that. And I want to return whatever is in that um, JSON file. So if at that point I would say get my joke and put that in the document, then Still need a callback function. So the next guy told me I'm quite nervous for my session. N right now, he's completely at ease because <laughs> it can't go any more wrong than this. Uh, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely typed. Definitely typed is awesome. That's the. Uh, So definitely that is awesome. Um, some of the features you'll, you can expect from TypeScript, the good thing is that they're available today. Um, because essentially, you've probably heard about ECMAScript 6 being released a couple of, well, not that long ago. Um, and it comes with some functionality like classes, as I just showed you in, in, uh, in, in TypeScript. 
Why is it cool that TypeScript does classes or adds functionality before it gets released? Well, you can use ECMAScript features before it's actually available in the standard, before any user or all users worldwide will already have a browser that, that supports ECMAScript. Think about the amount of users that you can that you can per perfectly rely on to have ECMAScript 5 functionality in their browser today. In theory, we can't assume even they have JavaScript, if you think of, for instance, like proxy browsing. Um, having the guarantee that actually anybody will have ECMAScript 6 functionality as of, say, next month, that's probably never going to happen, as, it's, it's, as we don't even have that for uh, ECMAScript 3 or 5 today. Um, that's, why, that's where TypeScript can help you um, to, to um, use the features that are available or use features that are not available in the, in the official standard today, even already uh, in your development process right now. There's a lot of uh, partners that have seen that, fun that added functionality as well and kind of, uh, that kind of, kind of like it. Um, you probably know a multitude of, 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 uh, of logos that are on that kind of slide, but there's one in particular I'd like to highlight, which is the first one, because um, the, the, the team that was working on, or is still working on, uh, on Angular within Google, uh, when they started out uh, developing in Angular in general, uh, they decided to, to build their own super type, the superset on, on JavaScript in order to do their whole uh, Angular development. Uh, that was called AdScript back in the days. Even Google already had stuff like Dart and everything. Um, another, another superset was, was invented to, to actually do that. Uh, but as Angular is growing, and we're now, now uh, looking more at, uh, at, uh, at, we're looking forward to, to Angular 2, the development team behind Angular also discovered that actually Microsoft and Google were doing about the same thing. Uh, and at a certain point, they were like, well, instead of keeping on developing our own uh, superset, why not implement that? Well, one of both supersets might be the best of, I don't know how they <coughs> made the choice. Um, but at this point, the Angular team loves TypeScript in general for what it can do for their uh, um, for their for their framework, so moving forward, especially everything uh, considering Angular two, will be built on TypeScript. Uh, and if you have a look at the, the, the all the code, all the demos, all the the, the samples that are available right now on, on Angular.io, uh, everything you see there will be uh, purely TypeScript. Which is, if you're a company like Microsoft and, and you you like to help web in general, seeing other companies or competitors like Google pick, picking up uh, stuff we're doing, I think it kind of confirms that we're, uh, we're doing something right. Um, next thing would be to show you how Angular and TypeScript work together. Uh, Nick, you want to help me survive another demo? So basically what you see here, it's uh, just not just yet the uh, the tour of heroes kind of tutorial that they provide with angular 2 uh, but rather just a simple angular 2 application uh, which you can see here uh, kind of the app component uh, on the left hand side you could see basically angular 2 written in typescript whereas on the right hand side you see exactly the same angular 2 web application but then written using just pure javascript so whatever you prefer uh, so you can you can still use, uh, although Angular 2, they kind of embraced TypeScript uh, for doing their developments. Uh, you could still choose to do pure JavaScript if you want to. Uh, and, and it's basically up to you to decide what fits your, your taste best. Uh, if you prefer left-hand side or right-hand side, uh, no political puns uh, intended here. Uh, but it's basically, yeah, whatever, whatever you like. So with TypeScript, you have uh, what I find a cleaner kind of layout of, of your uh, basically of your angular web uh, web code uh, note that angular does allow you to uh, where you see the inline templates or you could have your stylings as well inline uh, you can put them in external files as well uh, it's just kind of messy and just for the demo purposes that you could see everything in line uh, you could still have your template CSS uh, in separate HTML and CSS files so that's still appropriate. That would make it even more readable uh, for you. 
So this comes with, uh, of course, uh, the same advantages that you saw uh, presented by Stain, uh, like IntelliSense, uh, like going to definitions, uh, if you have uh, like all of the IntelliSense. You can just right click on any type and just do go to definition, it will go to that specific uh, definition of that object. Okay. So this is the, the pretty basic sample. If I now switch to a somewhat more advanced uh, application <coughs> here, uh, let me take the, the Tour of Heroes site. Uh, we can see here app component. And let's close this one here. So what you see here again is uh, somewhat more code. Again, it's all, all TypeScript, but here at the bottom, what you see here, and let me just remove this sidebar to give you some more real estate, uh, is again where you can see we're defining a class. So as mentioned by Stain, uh, you get support for classes, interfaces, generics, all of kind of the sugar coating that TypeScript provides on top of JavaScript, even though you may be generating uh, ECMAScript 5 code you still have all of the capabilities that would be provided through ECMAScript 6 or even functionality that will be provided in ECMAScript 7 may already turn up in TypeScript even before it's coming out. Uh, so you see your class, class definition, public variables, uh, methods all been defined. So this is basically Angular 2 all written in TypeScript. So I find it quite easy to kind of do your development that way, especially uh, you may love it or hate it if you come from Java. This feels a lot more natural than JavaScript. TypeScript is a lot more uh, accessible for Java developers uh, than JavaScript is. Because yeah. it has more of the features or, or the, the, the syntax that you have with, with Java. You find it back in TypeScript rather than doing that step into JavaScript, which is some, somewhat of a, bird, uh, a hurdle for, uh, for those kind of developers. The same thing for C Sharp, of course. Yeah. I think with that, uh, I'm handing it over back to you, uh, Stein, for, for closing up so that you, the next speaker still has some time. Um, TypeScript in general, the roadmap that we're, that we're looking at, just know that um, since it's an open source project, uh, the roadmap is also available completely uh, open online. So if you have a look at the, the GitHub repo that represents what that, that's uh, available on GitHub, obviously, uh, the full roadmap is there for you to, to, to see which functionality is already available uh, for you to use in a version. If I quickly want to go over uh, some of the, the, the additions we made, TypeScript 1.5, for instance, is a point in time where we included nearly all the features from AdScript. So as, as of that point, um, uh, it was interesting. It became interesting for the Angular team to, to start uh, replacing AdScript with, uh, with TypeScript. And as, as of uh, 1.6, uh, 1 we, uh, we had more than 50% uh, compatibility with, with ECMAScript uh, 6 standard, even though the standard wasn't out yet. Uh, React.js, for instance, was also something, I don't know who mentioned it, uh, but it was also something that was added in, uh, in, in version 1.6. Uh, and eventually, when TypeScript uh, 2 comes out, or 2.1, uh, everything you know from uh, ECMAScript 6 will be in there by default, and everything that's, that's, uh, that will be added to those standards in the, in the future should also be, uh, be, be part of TypeScript at that point. Um, when talking about the, the, the TypeScript ecosystem in general, uh, know that there's a huge community effort out there. Um, you can follow up on everything um, related to TypeScript on that GitHub repo. Um, in terms of type frameworks, I definitely want to mention the, the guys from Get Typed, uh, definitely Typed, uh, who are doing a lot of work to document all J JavaScript frameworks out there definitely useful to have such a resource and we're quite grateful for, for having them contribute to uh, what TypeScript can do. And the essence of, of the end, go end goal of having such a tool like TypeScript in general is uh, providing better tooling to web developers, to, uh, to you guys, uh, be it in Visual Studio, be it in Visual Studio Code, be it in Sublime uh, as a plugin, Atom, Eclipse, WebStorm, whatever you're using. Uh, we want to make sure that, that all the tool support you need is available uh, through this, uh, this, this fairly new um, superset of JavaScript. 
So what I want you to remember from today, or what I want, what I might suggest you 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 want to look at, uh, if you uh, if you if you go home tonight, uh, follow up on what the TypeScript team is doing at uh, at the URL mentioned on the screen. Um, if you're interested in, in what Visual Studio Code can do for your development, definitely have a look at what that that can do. It's available for Windows, Mac, uh, for Linux, uh, and it comes with a lot of great stuff. And if you want to follow up on, on more stuff that we're doing here at Microsoft in order to, to make sure to, 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 well, to evangelize our platform and other platforms as well uh, moving forward, we have a JavaScript webinar series set up. I think that the, the first one coming up will be uh, on uh, February 18th. And uh, there we'll, we'll dive into what TypeScript and Angular uh, can do or, or how they can enforce each other, how they are, are already enforcing each other. A uh, second session will be on the 25th of February. Well, basically, we'll, we'll show you how VS Code can help Angular developers do more stuff, be more productive, be, uh, make uh, better things. At that point, I'd like to hand it over to the next speaker.